Okay, thank you, Didier, for the, uh, yeah, the nice introduction and the possibility to, uh, to talk about the mentioned topic today. I hope everything is, you can see my full screen. Yes, we can. All is okay. fine. Constantly. Okay, perfect. So, first of all, um, what, what this AMSA, you already mentioned it. It's the electric uh, motor systems platform, and it's part of the technology co cooperation program for e on energy efficient end use equipment uh, within the IEA. Uh, the target is here is to share information and support good policy development for energy efficient equipment. And the goal of the electric motor system platform is to raise awareness um, on the large savings potential of electric motor driven systems. And we have different tasks dealing with uh, the national standards testing, or also with digitalization of motor uh, systems. And um, participating countries are uh, Australia, Austria, Denmark, European Commission, Netherlands, New Zealand, Sweden, uh, yeah, Switzerland, and, and the US. And uh, first, I always start with this overview of digital technologies. So what do we mean, we mean by digital digitalization? Uh, beginning on the left-hand side, it's smart sensors and intelligent control, the level of machines and beyond, and Internet of Things, enabling the communication between the different levels. Furthermore, we have um, continuous monitoring of the different appliances, which is very often the basis to analyze uh, data um, and therefore optimize operation. This means data analytics um, on both the level of motor systems, but also on the level of production lines or the whole company. Even. The technology is adding further advantages uh, to these applications are digital twins, cloud-based services, and artificial intelligence and augmented reality uh, can help implementing the suggested measures to find um, saving options by remote access. And three further technologies mentioned here are not directly related to optimization of motor driven systems, but are of further interest. So additive manufacturing, advanced robotics and, and drones. And these technologies uh, are described in our categorization report. And uh, the basis for digital solutions are very often sensors or other measuring equipment. And in principle, in connection with motor-driven systems, um, sensors can be used to, to monitor, for example, on the power equipment side, current and voltage. Then the variable speed drive can measure just, for example, frequency, current, voltage, power quality, or con consumption. Then for the motor itself, you can use sensors to measure temperature, vibration, or running hours. For the machine driven, for example, temperature, vibration, or speed are relevant. Then for the delivered output, it's, for example, flow, pressure, viscosity. And for the um, service, it's then um, temperature, humidity, particle uh, concentration, and so on. And uh, usually, um, companies expect from digitalization increasing quality and profit and increasing transparency in, in the production process. But what expect companies from digitalization projects concerning the energy uh, consumption? And as mentioned, we conducted interviews within the EMSA project, mainly in Austria and Sweden. And here are some specific uh, targets mentioned during the interview. So it's, for example, requirements to report and achieve targets for water, energy, and carbon dioxide, um, then reduction of electricity consumption during non-production times or yeah, weekend shutdowns, then reporting and analysis of energy efficiency uh, the energy effect of different uh, operational parameter settings, then automatic leak detection in compressed air systems or the operation of chiller systems based on weather forecasts, 
preventive of uh, maintenance of machine, for example, by the detection of pressure fluctuations in the pumps, condition monitoring of machines through vibration analysis or load management, different machines to profit from low or high price periods or to avoid high price periods and the simulation of systems before they actually are installed. It's also an example from the compressed air. So simulation of the energy uh, requirements of the compressed air station when installing a more efficient compressor. And here are the most uh, relevant obstacles mentioned by companies when installing digitalization uh, digital technologies. So the, the lack of standard uh, was mentioned to have been a significant problem in the past when trying to connect different machines and systems to each other since they use different protocols. However, this uh, area has been improving over the last couple of years, for example, but the OPC UA right, architecture. <clears throat> uh, all large industries agree that lack of competence is, is one of the major challenges. Many different skills are required when it comes to digitalization, so both in terms of software and hardware skills. Then the largest um, challenge, especially for smaller industries, is resources, uh, people, time, and money. And compared to large industries, they have significantly fewer uh, employees and a suitable competences for implementing new technology, digital technologies. And usually the few employees uh, are involved uh, in different uh, areas and have a lot to do. But also in bigger companies, there is sometimes only one expert in a company who could do this. Then uh, employees, but even sometimes management, are often unaware how much energy is used, for example, by compressed air or ventilation or cooling, and they treat it as if it were free of charge. Um, and there is also low awareness that digitalization can help to save energy. Then concerning profitability, according to the interview, is new projects must meet Static amortization periods, uh, so a return on invest of 2.5 or definitely less than three years, and which is considered difficult for energy projects. And then the, the amount of data um, that arise from sensors and measurements can be a challenge. Uh, in many cases, data interpretation and plausibility checks are very time consuming. And all industries stated that the cybersecurity is a risk and challenge for the implementation uh, of digitalization. So uh, furthermore, we, we try to give motor users recommendation for digitalization of the systems. And the most important one is to start with a motor list and check which systems are the most important one and where digitalization makes sense. And for pumps, fans, and compressed air, we gave some specific recommendations. But uh, for, yeah, here is the example for pumps. It makes sense to monitor speed, volume, but also electric uh, supply. And here it's why. Uh, here's an example from a Dutch company uh, that can monitor electric motors, clutches, and pumps using voltage and, and, and current sensors only. So. Sorry, <laughs> I tried to laser pointer. Yeah, so here is only this is only where it's measured, um, and these measure current and voltage. And the various uh, areas of application are, are shown here. So, um, on the one hand, uh, cavitating pumps. So. But pumps can be affected by the so-called um, water hammer, can be identified, and uh, damage to the coupling can be also detected. Then short circuits in stator windings are also monitored, and more motor bearing deterioration is also detected. And voltage and current asym uh, asymmetries can also be quickly identified. They also measure the speed 
from the voltage and now the transmitted power from the calculated power and therefore also the characteristic of the curve of the bump I, I will show it later on. And in the document, it also described the use of temperature variation sensors and the use of variable speed drives, which also uh, can also fulfill many of these functions. Then uh, I have to put Yeah, next to compressed air. So if I equip um, my compressor air station, now with the measurement points in this graph, I have the following advantages. So electrical uh, power measurement um, makes it possible to quickly recognize situations um, with unusual increased power requirements. It can be intake valves or something else, which leads to increased uh, power requirement of full load. Mm. The, then the, the service um, life of cook compressors depends heavily on the operating conditions. So if it's a peak load or a base load compressor and bearing damage uh, increases the vibration frequency. So vibration sensors on the bearing of the compressor element enable early detection of, of such a damage. Then the room temperature um, of the compressor should also be monitored. Ex uh, yeah, excessive temperatures uh, reduce the efficiency of compressed air generation. This can be caused by uh, inappropriate ventilation, for example. And then uh, pressure um, measurements can be used to recognize pressure um, drops and thus the need for higher pressure requirements on the compressor. Uh, for example, filters can be automatically monitored. Then uh, flow, flow measurements um, for individual lies and directly upstream here uh, of the consumer allow the compressed air consumption to be allocated to different department lines, lines, consumers, machines, or for individual products at the end. Yeah. Now, uh, within the EMSA project, we collected several uh, use cases or case studies where digitalization had a positive impact on the energy consumption. Participating countries were Netherlands, Sweden, Switzerland, and Austria. And, and I start with uh, a case implemented by uh, a company in the Netherlands, but the implementation took place in, in the United Kingdom. So here you see the Yorkshire water companies, the water supply and sewage company in the United Kingdom and um, has applied this electric uh, signature analysis, which I explained before for the pumps for the condition mon monitoring. And uh, yeah, as explained, sensors in a motor control cabinet uh, measure all three phases of current and voltage um, at high frequency. And this, yeah, this is the company's called Somatics. And they installed it. And here you see uh, Somatics develop tools that model motor and pump efficiency based uh, on, the elect uh, on the online electric signal. And they also measure the speed from the voltage and know the transmitted power from the calculated uh, power and therefore also the characteristic curve of the pumps. And here are some results they can show for each pump. In this case, the pump operates um, at, at low flow, but high head, which signals that something is wrong and should be checked. Yeah, this project covered 11.5 million euro expenditure for hardware and services. And the investment costs per asset were 500 to 1,000 euro exclusive the installation, installation costs, which was done in this case by the company. Then the, the monitoring cost per year per asset are 500 to 800 year, uh, euro per year. Yeah, the following benefits were driving the measure. So the, the company wanted to improve the reliability, the uptime of the asset base, 
they wanted to have a lower maintenance cost, especially for submerged assets, so borehole farms. They wanted to eliminate unplanned breakdowns. Uh, and they wanted to lower the energy use of their assets by eliminating inefficiency. And the energy and CO2 emission savings are expected to be up to 15%. And the return on invest will be below uh, half a year. Then the next case in Switzerland is about the company Priot. Mm. Uh, that applies IoT, that's where the name comes from, sensors to detect clock air filters in ventilation systems at, at server sites, allowing a more accurate uh, timing uh, of, for the exchange for, of the filter. So the, the ventilation use is used for regulating temperature in, in server sites, introducing air from the outside into the building through the filters. And a typical system has a running hours around uh, 2,000 uh, yeah, 2000 per year and a nominal power ranging down to 0.5 uh, kilowatt, the average airflow of two, uh, 2,500 cubic meters uh, per hour. And uh, the pressure to inference, the room temperature and the humidity is recorded by the, um, the monitoring device. Uh, applied to the system. Then the data is transferred by LoRaWAN um, to, to the cloud-based system. And LoRaWAN is, yeah, quite, it's, it's getting much more known, but it's a networking protocol designed to wirelessly connect, a bet, for example, battery operated devices to the internet. Then the computations are carried out to, to assess the filter pollution status and the cloud implementation incorporates a, um, a digital twin, and um, which means uh, replicates the ventilation system using a measurement data. And based on the collected data, then the automated filter maintenance process is put in place. So uh, first it involves the monitoring through the sensor, then the establishment of a pollution threshold according to the manufacturer, um, data sheet, uh, and then uh, a real-time analysis is uh, done against the threshold. And when the pollution um, level is is higher than the predetermined threshold, uh, an automated trigger uh, initiates uh, notifications via SMS, email, or phone, and at the same time. Uh, an automated filter order is triggered via a data interface uh, to the filter manufacturer. So what is the effect on energy consumption? Yeah, basically, the power drawn is, is linearly dependent on the pressure drop, increased by factor 2.5 when the filter is clocked, so quite substantial. And the ma maintenance occurred every six months and the filter was changed and the pollution level was higher than 80%. And if the filter is changed after nine instead of 12 months, then the ventilation system would operate with a polluted filter for, for three months, consuming uh, instead of 6,500 kilowatt hour, only 5,200. So around 20% can be saved. The investment cost is 1,000 euro. But there are further advantages, like the decrease in the frequency of on-site maintenance can be reduced by a factor of three, and the extension of filter lifetime and quick recognition of non-optimal operation. So the payback only on maintenance cost is, is two years. Then here is another example for fan systems. Uh, Coca-Cola in Austria, it's the one of the largest companies in Austria in the non-alcoholic beverage segment. Um, and is a licensed bottler of the Coca-Cola company and the majority of the beverages are produced uh, yeah, locally uh, production site in Edelstahl in Austria. And the plant's 18 largest ventilation system consume around 10% of the total electricity requirements. 
here of around three gigawatt hours before optimization. So, and the ventilation system were running at full capacity even on non-production days. So firstly, those systems were that were not yet controlled um, by frequency converters were equipped with these drives in order to enable uh, the demand based air change rate and the critical production machines. In this case, bottling machines were defined during the operation of which the ventilation system must de deliver the full flow. And in the event that these machines um, were switched off, now a minimum volume flow of, of usually 15% was defined. And in the course of this, the minimum air exchange was also checked. Yeah, the on-off status uh, of the production a system now triggers the corresponding um, ventilation control, either half or full volume flow. Um, and for this purpose, the signal from the production machine is transmitted directly to the control uh, system. And furthermore, they installed a building management system. And this reduces now the air volume on non-production uh, days to the necessary minimum. And all ventilation systems are integrated into the energy monitoring systems uh, or monitoring system. And this showed that the weekly energy requirements during normal operation has been reduced by approximately 15% for the system. And the payback time for the whole project was less than three years. Then to cooling systems, um, the IKEA store, uh, in, in Sweden, uh, has, includes um, a restaurant and a cafeteria with uh, refrigeration freeze rooms, as well as display cabinets. And the cooling systems consist of um, a rack of CO2 compressors and several compressors are, are, are already frequency controlled. It's however, general common that some of the compressors are operating in one and off, on and off mode. And the compressors were already controlled with two ITOP control systems and had the so-called climate check online performance monitoring installed. And several uh, parameter settings were tested. In one test, the cold storages were cooled down some degrees more than the normal set point during the night uh, when the price of electricity is lower. And the compressors were also load limited during these critical hours and when, when the price is high. So here you see uh, the outside temperature um, and the energy consumption here in blue, the system. And remember this line is 15 kilowatt hours per hour, so 15 kilowatt. And now the test you see here if you, that uh, during the night, the operation is increased, but during day, uh, less energy is needed. So uh, the operation showed a an, an lower energy consumption of minus 20%, and it was possible to shift the loads from daytime to nighttime. And it resulted also at uh, the lower load on the grid. So now we come to compressed air and <clears throat> yeah, two examples. The first is of Hamilton Bonner 2 in Switzerland. Uh, they um, produce automated liquid handling working stations. And, and uh, they had five uh, screw compressors installed. Two of them were uh, VSD controlled, three were fixed speed. And the power ratings were from 15 to 50 kilowatt. And it was working 24 hours. And the, um, yeah, at eight bar actually, not 7.5. And the energy consumption was around 488 meg megawatt hours. And the specific energy consumption was 126 watt hour per cubic meter. So the company installed uh, a central adaptive uh, monitor control system, so called Sigma Air Manager of KESA. And this control is connected to the refrigeration dryers and compressors uh, to 
but also to filter uh, system, to pressure sensors, and to the drainage system on the lower level, but also um, on, on the, the higher level, it was uh, connected to, to the internal network. Yeah, then um, three compressors were retrofitted. Um, two of these compressors are equipped with VFD. One uh, is fixed speed and all had uh, 37 kilowatts. And the compressed uh, air base load is produced through compressors without VFD, and one uh, is produced with VFD. And after the production phase, the compressors are being tested on operational readiness in the lab, simulating already the, the consumer's facilities in digital twin format. And thanks to the digital twin, uh, there is a virtual version of the compressor systems in the PESA offices, allowing a remote support as well as further support uh, for Helmington. And the control now detects optimal operating points according uh, to the pressure need and the air volume produced with the goal uh, to increase the overall system-wide efficiency so of all compressors installed. And here are some information on the costs, the investment costs of the control was around 10,000 euro, then the compressors 80,000 euros, and then when they had to install further pipes, so 10,000 euros for installation. And the payback for the control was uh, 2.2 years and for the compressors 8.9. And now this, uh, the pressure could be lowered by 0.5 bar, so to 7.5 bar and uh, the system can deliver much more constant pressure. And now the air pressure, um, yeah, um, automatically adapts to changes in production line. Then the system is currently producing one cubic meter with 106 watt hour, so minus 16 percent, 24. And from these savings, one part is achieved um, by the low, by running the compressors by lower pressure, but at lower pressure. Then one part is the optimized control of the compressor system, and the rest is due to the new compressor units. And yet, because of, um, I, uh, Hamilton decided to install the compressors uh, with a higher capacity than before in order to expand the production and therefore the energy consumption is higher than before. Then a similar example um, of Capita in Festritz in Carinthia, they produce uh, 100,000 snowboards a year and the compressed air generation systems consists of three uh, screw compressors, two fixed and one variable speed, um, with a total electrical output of 103 kilowatt. Uh, and the data was measured, um, evaluated, and analyzed by uh, Druckluftoptimierung Christian Steinbrucker. And it was found that there were uh, too many compressors in use, uh, which were switched on and very often. Um, and operated with too many idle hours with fluctuating pressure curves. So this is particularly in multi-compressor systems without or with incorrect set higher level controls. It often happens that one compressor or even all compressors are in idle mode um, for long periods of time and they waste energy by that. Because in idle mode, no compressor uh, air is produced, but the electric motor continues to run and as a result yeah, around 20% of the electrical power of the full case is consumed. So <coughs> Capita installed also a, a manufacturer independent high level control, it's called Air Leader Master and it's included power measurement, bearing vibration monitoring with energy monitoring and uh, alarm as well as service management. And it decided to install a sensor on the compressed air tank to permanently monitor um, and record the pressure dew point. And all relevant data is now recorded and monitored. 
we also have um, a room temperature sensor um, in the end compressed air uh, yeah, generation system. And if a value exceeds or falls below an, uh, the alarm value limits, it's signaled online by the online monitoring system. And here are the results. So the, the proportion of load hours was increased from 75 to 99%, um, while the proportion of idling uh, hours was reduced from 25 to 1%. And furthermore, the motor starts and the load idle cycles were reduced. And the pressure is, is much more stable. The total operating hours of oil compressors have been reduced. And the specific um, compressed air performance indicator has also been optimized. And now another important function is the newly installed monitoring uh, system. This allows a report to be generated, providing all informa important information on the compressed air systems. For example, per day, calendar week, or months as required. And the energy savings uh, for this system station was around 30%. Yeah, and the payback was uh, very short. Before. Now I come to two more general examples. So the one is the DMW group plant in, St in Steyr. And they um, have a comprehensive data recording system. And this includes the, the, the plant energy supply, but also extends uh, to small consumers in individual um, machines, such as tooling or pro pro processing machines. And various media consumption, such as the electricity uh, or compressed air consumption of individual production lines are now recorded um, and monitored ce centrally, and, but also are visualized directly on site. So the electric power consumption of various consumers per line is currently being um, recorded in order to calculate the energy consumption per unit or shift produced. In addition, the degree of the utilization of the machines is displayed in the form of efficiency classes. And um, yeah, the cooling water, uh, cold water, cooling labric lubricants, and heat are, will, are, are, will also be integrated in the data acquisition. And this is realized uh, using a multi channel measuring device. Yeah, and um, they define clear targets per line uh, for the base load during the non production times, and the respective control centers were res or are responsible for ensuring uh, the set load base load target values are reached after the end of production of the last shift before the weekend. And the weekly evaluation of these shutdowns uh, reveals then the, the irregularities. And every Monday, a full uh, report uh, is sent to the relevant departments to ensure that the energy consumption overruns are recognized and avoided in the future. And here are the results. So since 2016, 25% of the original uh, base load uh, could be uh, reduced. And since 2019, uh, the 14% of the compressed air base load has been saved. Then the last example is Inyo Jembacher, which is a manufacturer of gas engines in Tyrol. And they have many projects for CO2 optimized production. And they spent several weeks working with the operating and maintenance staff in a pilot area of around 55 production machines and tried to check which mis machines remain switched on at the weekend and, and yeah, and, and why. Uh, where possible, technical measures were then implemented uh, on the machines to, and, and switch off states were defined and automated if possible. So a weekly report now is created, which displays the measured electrical energy and compressed air requirements and the associated CO2 uh, generation as a bar chart. You can see here of the non-operating time at the weekend. And it can be seen whether the defined threshold of the energy consumption 
for compressed air and as electricity has been reached. And any necessary measures are then discussed with the uh, operation person. And as a result, the demand for electric energy at the weekend was reduced by 30%. Then um, measuring the power and compressed air of the uh, production machines also uh, make condition monitoring possible and events can or incidents can be detected. For example, in some case, the compressed air hose uh, to the spindle, you see on the, the picture, um, becomes detached from the fitting. And however, uh, this is also causes that the, the built-in air throttles are blown out, resulting in increased compressed air um, requirement when the hoses were simply connected. So these events would not be have not been recognized without monitoring. And yeah, the visualization enabled immediate action to be taken. And the additional compressed air requirement was uh, about 30 percent if the, the yeah. If, yeah, when, when, if the throttles were blown out. Then as a further example, two different uh, compressed air leaks were discovered. One of them increased the basic air comp uh, comp compressed air consumption um, around the clock. So number one, while a leak that occurred at the same time increased the peak consumption. So number two, that was clearly recognizable on this, on this graph. Both types of leaks are now uh, to be recognized using algorithms. So now I come to the summary um, or conclusions from our work. So digitalization is an enabler to create transparency in terms of when and how energy is being used. And this is a crucial first step when it comes to the optimization of uh, motor systems. Then the potential savings vary greatly. So depending on, on, on following factors. So is the information that is provided through the digital solution used to implement optimization measures, then does this necessitate human intervention? And is this intervention being followed uh, through? Then what is the starting point is of the motor system? Is it Was it already optimized or has it, for example, already a VSD? And typically, higher savings can be achieved if the motor system is not optimized at the outset. Sure. And in the case studies presented, uh, the highest savings were achieved by simply using as much as energy as it really needed. Then energy savings are not always the primary driver, uh, but rather a side effect of the optimization. So non-energy benefits play sometimes a, a more decisive role. This can be, for example, avoiding downtime, uh, decreasing maintenance cost, or increasing production efficiency. Yeah, thank you. Uh, now I'm happy 